The biggest difference between VR storytelling and more traditional kinds of storytelling is that you're not telling a story in the traditional way. It's more like um, architecture or theme park design. You're creating a place for people to go rather than kind of sitting them down going, let me tell you a story. You can put someone in a different world and they accept that world. It can be hyper stylized, it could be realistic. It doesn't really change the fact that you're there and you're experiencing it. It's just this amazing emergent area of game development. The technology is really cool as well. I'm a proper nerd, so I, I just like playing with all this cutting edge, high tech stuff. I've been working in games now for coming up to 10 years, making various different kinds of games over the years and now kind of specializing specifically in VR. Bithla Games is an independent games company. We are trying to make uh, titles that are going in a different direction, testing new experiences. That's why we're able to experiment with VR right now. We'd finished volume and Sony started talking to us about, you know, what's next. And they started talking to us about PlayStation VR. And I think that's the big thing is VR is really cool. And there's probably much deeper technical analysis I could give, but it really is that. It's just it's amazing when you put this stuff on. VR is a huge marketing opportunity because you can make up the rules as you go along right now. But once PlayStation VR or some of the other companies come out with their VR platforms, we'll get a better sense of what do people actually want from this. Do they want experiences? Do they want games? Do they want films? We have no idea yet what the consumer wants. What we do know, though, is that all of the old ways don't really work necessarily. You know, you can't look at a trailer and get a real experience of what that game's going to be. You can't watch a streamer or a YouTuber playing a game and get a real sense of what that game is. We're going to have to go out and show players what these games are, put the games in people's hands. You know, it's always very, very weak to say the target audience is everyone, but that could be the way we're going in the same way as who's the target audience for television. I do think there is an opportunity there for now. Yes, for now the audience who are playing VR are super engaged tech people who want cool, awesome new technology to play with. What's very interesting with VR is the tangibility of these worlds and the sense they feel like real places is that it means that you can actually incorporate much more tangible ways of marketing. When we think about VR tourism, most people would think like, ah, you know, I'm gonna be on a beach and it's gonna be beautiful. But that doesn't have to be it. it it could be a game, it could just be a really beautiful environment in a game, and you just take time there. You just sit there and you look around. VR literally locks you in, and you, you can't experience other stuff while you're in it. Even with something that's not realistic, something that's more kind of abstract or stylized, you remember it in the same way as you remember places. That kind of sense of presence, like how it felt to be there, how you got there, what the environment was like, how it sounded, how it looked. It's not like remembering an image on a screen. The future, we're just getting a glimpse at it right now. And if VR is picked up, we're going to be shocked by how extremely fast technology moves after that in giving different experiences on different platforms. I feel like VR is going to have an impact. It's going to be a thing. Whether it takes over, whether we're all losing our TVs in two years, I don't know. But it's, it's going to have an effect. It's going to have an impact. So I think there is definitely great work to be done there. And we're just having a great time.